Col du Tourmalet, the mountain of bad return. Its name perfectly sums up what this mountain pass actually is, the most climbed peak in the Tour de France's history. Do you want to know its legend, its history, and its great battles? Follow my wheel and I'll tell you. The Tourmalet was first included in the route of the Tour de France in the 8th edition in 1910. Henri de Grange, one of the founders of the race, sent sport journalist Alphonse Denet to the Pyrenees with the mission of discovering a mountain range that would challenge cyclists. At a time when the French race hardly included on its route in mountainous difficulties, de Grange feared, however, that the Pyrenean mountain range would be too hard for cyclists. After overcoming Obisk and Aspen without problems, Stenay started from the enigmatic village of Saint-Marie de Campan, his particular ascent to this great colossus. After making much of the ascent, the driver had to stop the car four kilometers from the summit due to the abundant snow. Despite the snowfall, the fact that night was near and that the driver warned him that there were bears in the area, Stenay decided to walk the remaining four kilometers to reach the top of the pass. His daring climb almost cost him his life. He slipped on the icy road and fell into a stream. Soggy, he climbed back up to the road, but he had no strength left and collapsed in the snow. A few hours passed until the Luxembourg reporter was found late at night very close to the town of Barage by its inhabitants. Alerted to the recklessness of the journalist with principles of hypothermia due to the low temperatures, after having been on the verge of death, Stenay was still clear about his priorities. Before eating, resting, or taking a hot bath, he went to a telegraph office and sent a message to de Grange with the most famous lie in the history of cycling. Pass the Termelay, route in good condition, perfectly practicable. The myth was born. In its more than 100 years of history, few landscapes have been as representative of the Tour de France as the Col du Tourmalet. Of the 110 editions that are fulfilled this year, 82 have included a Tourmalet ascent, being the end of the stage on three occasions, 1974, 2010, and 2019. We must add the times that it's also been the scene of the Vuelta a España, thus becoming the busiest mountain pass in the history of professional cycling. In 2010, Tour de France honored the Tourmalet on the centenary of its discovery for cycling. It was climbed in two different days, the second of them as the end of the 17th stage. Its fame is well deserved, since it's a very hard mountain in any slope by which it is climbed. The ascents last more than 17 kilometers from the east side and 19 from the west, with an average slope of 7% that exceeds 10% when approaching the top and 1,258 meters of unevenness. It's also one of the highest mountain passes in world cycling, with a maximum of 2,115 meters of altitude. The time records are between 47 and 48 minutes on the eastern slope, the shortest, a titanic effort even for great climbers. Since the 1980 edition, it's considered Hors Categorie. Among the cyclists we've managed to crown the Tourmalet in first position are names of illustrious riders such as Coppi, Merckx, Tevenet, Bahamontes, or Julio Jimenez, who all had great fights in the Pyrenean mountain range. The first cyclist to crown its summit was Octave Lapice, who would arrive with the yellow jersey in Paris, winning the Tour that year, and has a large sculpture in his honor. Legend has it that Lapice got off the bike and finished the ascent on foot. When he reached the top, Totally exhausted, he was unable to say a word for a few minutes, and when he finally caught his breath, his first words were to the organizers, You are murderers. Yes, murderers. In 1969, the best cyclist in history starred in one of the greatest cycling feats that are ever remembered. At that time, Eddie Merckx, who was making his debut in the Tour de France, 
had already shown his class with the victory in his first Giro, crushing Feliz Gimondi in Tresime di Lavaredo. However, his most epic victory was yet to come. The Queen stage was disputed with the Tourmalet more than 100 kilometers to the finish line. It was a special day for the cannibal. His faithful squire, Van den Bosch, has just announced that he was leaving the Faema team, and in his native country, his wife was about to give birth to Sabrina Merckx, their first daughter. On the starting line of Bagnère du Luchon, the Belgian declared that, when the others arrive, I'll have already showered. Merckx had practically assured the general classification, and the more than 60 flat kilometers at the end of the stage augured a quiet day among the favorites. But overcome Aspen and Parasort in the middle of Tourmalet, the cannibal decided to light the fuse. He passed first through the top and made a crazy descent. The next thing was to overcome the obisk and travel alone the more than 60 flat kilometers to Morex. We don't know if Eddie Merckx took a shower that day before his rivals arrived. What we do know is that the second cyclist to cross the finish line took eight minutes longer. Aspen, Tourmalet, and Luz Ardidan. That was the sequence of mountains presented by the Tour for stage number 17 of its 1985 edition. That cycling is a team sport is known to all, but rarely do the tactics of the directors go as planned on the bus. On this occasion, the tactics of the Spanish team, Seat Orbea, planned by its director, Perurena, couldn't go better. During the ascent to Col de Aspen, Pepe del Ramo left ahead followed by his teammate, Cabestani, who did it on the descent going together to the Tourmalet. Once there and abandoned Del Ramo, Pedro Delgado leaves the group four kilometers from the top to contact Cabestani and break the race, which went crazy. Only Herrera was able to go out in search of the Spaniard, but it was too late. Pedro Delgado achieved, after his attack in the mythical Tourmalet, his first stage victory on French lands. One of the most important moments in Miguel Indurain's career in the 90s, the Swiss rider Tony Rominger stood out for being the best down rider of the peloton. It was the year 93 and Miguel Indurain was living the Tour de France as a simple observer. Before the mountain stages, the difference with respect to their rivals was more than four minutes. That day, the Tourmalet frightened all the Spanish fans. Rominger took the lead and the peloton, led by Indurain, moved to 50 later. The switch launched without brakes, crossing the slopes of the Pyrenean Colossus. 18 kilometers of descent where Rominger, who was going to moor in the tour, could put Indurain in trouble and with an obisk still to ascend. French television didn't show Indurain until before reaching Luz saint Sauveur, as he appeared glued to the wheel of the Swiss cyclist and eating. Incredible, an epic descent. On the centenary of the first ascent to the Tourmalet, the race decided to pay tribute to the most epic mountain, including it as a stage finish for the second time in its history, and this time more decisive than ever. Two of the best climbers of modern cycling, Andy Schleck and Alberto Contador, were the clear dominators of the race, but they had problems with each other. The Spaniard had managed to wear in yellow in a controversial stage where the youngest of the Schleck brothers had a mechanical breakdown in the Port de Bales. Contador didn't wait and he had started the stage with only 8 seconds ahead of the Luxembourg cyclist. Saxo Bank used all its weapons, from Cancellara to Jakob Fuglsang, in order to toughen the race. And with 10 kilometers to the finish, Andy Schleck launched a devastating attack through the fog. The Spaniard endured that onslaught and many others. He even dared to try. But as if they were two boxers after hearing the bell of the last round, they shook hands at the finish line. Contador won the 2010 Tour de France and Andy Schleck the stage. Thank you very much for getting here. Subscribe so you can help us tell more stories. Click like and if you want to continue enjoying the best cyclists in history, don't miss this.